G'day everyone, Nick from Mates in Construction. The Psychosocial Code of Practice is commencing here in Queensland on April 1st. Workplace health and safety has always been a strong part of the building and construction industry. Managing risks is something that we're doing pretty well across the board. Now, with the Psychosocial Code of Practice, it's also important to manage psychological and psychosocial risks that might be in the work environment. We here at Mates last year commissioned some research with Griffith University that accumulated in our annual report of blueprint data and that showed that there are some pretty challenging work environments across the construction industry. Psychosocial hazards attached to supervisor conflict, attached to peer support and attached to job control were pretty problematic right across the board. There's a lot of work to be done to manage these psychosocial hazards a lot better in the building and construction industry. But what can we do about it? Mates for the past four years have been working on the blueprint for better mental health and suicide prevention in the building and construction industry. As a part of this framework for mental health initiatives, one of the pillars is how to prevent workplace hazards. There are two things companies can do when they sign up to the blueprint for better mental health, which will help you manage psychosocial risks a bit better in your work environment. The first is an audit tool where a representative from Mates will sit down with you and run through a series of questions attached to workplace mental health initiatives on your site or within your company. From there you'll get a report which will talk about some of the things that might be working well and some of the areas you might need to improve over time to create a more safe psychosocial environment. We can work with you on that plan over a week, over a month or over six months. It all depends on what you need from us as an organisation to improve some of those psychosocial hazard management plans. The second tool is what we call the People at Work Construction Survey. That survey was developed by Griffith University in consultation with the building and construction industry. And it pivots off years of work from the Office of Industrial Relations into how to measure and look at what pressures are in the work environment. This particular survey is construction specific. It takes into account, account the unusual nature of the construction industry in having multiple supervisors, in having subcontractors on site and people moving across different te teams on a daily basis. After a site does this 20 minute survey together, they then get a report about what some of the psychosocial hazards might be present within that work group. It might be that that particular work group needs to invest in better supervisor training. It might mean that they need better peer support on site for people who are doing it tough and feeling isolated. It might mean that they need to develop better understandings of bullying and harassment in the workplace. All of these things are presented to the site contact in a de-identified report that again, they can work on over a week, a month or six months with mates, depending on what that particular site wants from mates in construction. Mates have two new initiatives that can help a site uh, better manage psychosocial hazards within the workplace. And my good mates, Josh and Justin, are now gonna take you through what these look like in terms of a training perspective. G'day, my name is Josh, and I'm the apprentice coordinator here at Mates in Construction. Our research has shown that construction workers are at increased risk for suicide, and that's especially true for apprentices. This has been validated over the years and as a result of these findings we conducted a project with the Queensland Government where we contacted every apprentice in Queensland and asked them how they were doing. The findings of this uh, project were really positive for most apprentices. Roughly 70% of apprentices were having a good time, respected by their colleagues and supervisors and generally doing pretty well. We found some disturbing trends though. Approximately 30% of apprentices have been bullied, suicidal ideation was up and there are other issues around mental health. Um, that apprentices struggle with. Generally they were found to have low levels of mental health and suicide literacy and the results from this report were used in conjunction with the Australian Institute for Suicide Research and Prevention and Griffith Uni who produced a report on behalf of MATES addressing suicidality in Queensland construction industry apprentices. The study was centred around bullying um, as it was found that apprentices were at an increased risk for bullying and a number of recommendations were made by the academics for action that could be taken to help improve and prevent suicide and mental health. Those recommendations were resilience training around financial management, suicide and mental health literacy, workplace bullying, workplace rights and drug and alcohol abuse. As a response to these findings and these recommendations, we've developed a half day training program that will be delivered on site in your facilities or at our office in Spring Hill. It covers these areas, it's catered, we provide all of the necessary resources and we'd love for some of your members who want to put their apprentices through this training to reach out to us. You can do that by contacting our office during business hours 
and at the completion of the training will provide the employer with a statement of attainment that they can keep on file as part of their training and supervision requirements. G'day, I'm Justin. I'm the coordinator of supervisor training here at Mates & Construction. Off the back of some research in 2021 that went out to all apprentices in Queensland, over 27,000 of them, um, we learned a few things about our industry. And what we learned was that um, while a, a large proportion of our industry is doing really, really well and coping really, really well, there was a portion of our industry that, that was struggling off the back of bullying, harassment, discrimination in the workplace. So as a result, we looked at how can we better empower the people that lead our workforces, the people that manage our workforces, the people that supervise and coordinate our workforces. And so it has been a privilege to be able to work with some um, incredible people as we developed what we call supervisor training. Now, it isn't supervisor training just for supervisors, it's for anyone that, that um, is a leader in our industry, and that could be a business owner, that could be a coordinator, that could be a manager, that could be anyone that, that looks after people and looks after workplaces. And so the supervisor training itself is actually broken up into two parts. So the first part, we've worked with um, a world-renowned uh, barrister, um, Andrew Douglas, KC. Um, who actually talks to us about our legal obligations um, in terms of work health and safety law. And he also breaks into um, the new psychosocial code of practice um, regulation uh, amendments that will be coming into law in, on the 1st of April in 2023 this year. Um, so that's a really important part for anyone to hear anyone that's running a business, anyone that's um, leading other people in, in the industry. The second half of the training, and it goes for four hours, the second half of the training actually looks at leadership. So one of the core elements that Andrew Douglas um, KC talks about in the legal obligations is the importance of good leadership in terms of how we look after um, at the people in our employee and how we look after our work sites and workplaces. And so the second part of the supervisor training looks at three distinct principles on how we can actually effectively, proactively and um, genuinely, authentically actually lead people in the workplaces. And so there's some, some tools and some skills that we actually learn from each other in the room. So wrapping it all up, the supervisor training program is, is broken down to A, understanding our legal obligations that we all have as, as leaders in our workplaces, as leaders in our communities, understanding our legal obligations in terms of bullying, harassment and discrimination on a workplace. Um, and B, how do we become more effective leaders, managers, work um, supervisors, coordinators? How do we become more effective in what we do day to day? And how do we treat people um, with the respect that they deserve on a workplace? So those are the two elements that you're gonna get from this. I, I really encourage you to do yourself a favor and take four hours out of your day. Invest four hours into your organization, into your business, um, that'll help you make good choices into the future. So. Thanks for listening and um, hope to see you soon. For the last 14 years, part of MATE's program logic is site accreditation. And what site accreditation means is that that site can manage the risk of suicide, but also have an open conversation about some of the stigma that's attached to mental health and suicide prevention. These things help to better manage psychosocial hazards. So to become a MATE's accredited site, there are three things that you need to do. The first is to make sure that your entire site has gone through general awareness training. Training that takes you through why we have such high rates of suicide and what you can actually do about it in the building and construction industry. The second is to have at least 20% of the workplace trained as connectors. Connectors can actually link someone into support if they're struggling, if you've identified that they need some support and together can offer a plan to get them back on their feet. And the third is at least one assist trained volunteer. And that assist trained volunteer can work with someone to get them to safety if they're having thoughts of suicide or if there's a plan in place around suicide long term. Those three things get you mates accreditation and those three things can not only make a site more suicide aware but create open conversations around how we can change the culture in the industry so that people are in a better work environment and feeling supported not only by their team, not only by their peers, but their direct line supervisors as well. The psychosocial code of practice may feel like it's a bit of a difficult thing to tackle for people 
who aren't used to these regulations, but we here at Mates want to make sure you're supported to know what you can do about it, how you can manage these risks, and most importantly, how you can make sure that the mental health and well-being of your team is thriving.